Welcome to Dad Built. Installing hard plastic edging is a great way to give your landscaping a crisp and clean look. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you five tips to help you get the best result from your next DIY project. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna give you some bonus tips to take your DIY edging to the next level. Let's jump right in. Plan your project. Having a good plan gives you a better opportunity to be happy with your finished product. Measure out where you want your landscape beds to go. For straight beds, I pound some stakes into the ground and run a tight string line to make sure my edging stays even. For curved beds, I lay out a garden hose in the shape that I'm trying to create. But before you get into this project, think about what you're going to do with any excess dirt that you're not spreading back into the beds. Either have a place to dump it or plan to haul it away. Hard plastic edging comes in these rolls. The material is gonna to wanna to keep whatever shape it's in, so before you start your project, unroll your edging and let it sit in the sun for at least 30 minutes. This helps flatten it out nicely in time for it to be installed. Use the essential tools. For an edging project, that means you're gonna need a half moon edger. This is the best tool to use for digging clean and precise edges. The curved head is best for soil removal and it's gonna give you the most professional looking result. Other tools you're gonna need are a hammer, a rake, some gloves and safety glasses, and a pretty solid wheelbarrow because this dirt and sod is really heavy. While the edger and the wheelbarrow are definitely essentials, there are precision tools out there that are gonna make this job easier and your end result better. Use a landscape knife to dig up rocks, reinforce your lines, and help get an even height on your installation. You can use a rubber mallet to tap your edging down into the soil of your trench. And I always recommend using a foam landscape pad to make the job more comfortable. Your knees are gonna thank you later. If you have more than 50 feet of continuous edging, you're gonna need to connect two pieces together. Your hard plastic edging is gonna come with two of these. These are straight connectors and they're meant to connect two pieces of edging end to end in a linear way. If you have 90 degree angles like I do down here and over there, you're gonna need one of these. This is a corner coupler and it's meant to join two pieces of edging together at this angle. And if you have the angle, you really need it. There's really no way to bend or cut this edging around that corner and have it look good. I bought my edging at Home Depot. I bought my stakes there as well, but Home Depot didn't sell these. I had to trek all the way over to Menards to find one of these locally, but I'm glad I did. So if you have this corner, don't skip this step and make the trip if you have to. Use heavy duty landscape stakes. Now landscape stakes typically don't come with your edging roll. You're gonna have to buy these separate. They usually come in packs of like 12. Here are the ones that I use. These are heavy duty steel spikes. To install these, it's very simple. You just take your stake at a 45 degree angle with this tab on top pointing towards your edging. You're gonna take that and you're gonna put it in the material right above that bottom lip and you're gonna tap it in and as it goes in, it's gonna grab onto the material and pull it tight against that edge. I stake my edging every two to three feet. So for a 50 foot roll, I'm using somewhere between 15 and 20 of these. Some people don't stake so close, maybe every five feet or so. What you do comes down to your preference. Some good advice for edging, especially around your curves, let your material flow naturally. That means dry fit your edging into the space and see what the material wants to do. The edging will naturally contour to the shape of the space that it's in. Use your stakes to supplement this flow and don't try to force it to do something unnatural. It's okay to go back and pull out stakes after you've completed a run. Look down the line of your edging to make sure it's reasonably how you want it. If you see problems with the smoothness of your line, it's likely due to staking, and you can solve them by repositioning your stakes in a more natural way. If you've stuck with me this far, please give me a like and a subscribe down below. I post all kinds of content for DIY dads, and it would be great if you joined the crew. As promised, here are some bonus tips for a professional result. If you have to dig up sod for your new beds, it's best to cut it into smaller strips with your half moon edger. You can tear up or roll up your sod strips to make the removal more manageable, but no matter what, this is a tough job. 
Use a hand tiller to break up dirt and backfill low spots with topsoil. Then you can fill with two to three inches of new mulch. Check out the video I posted called Five Quick Tips for New Mulch Beds for more information about mulching best practices. Putting in your new landscaping beds is exciting, and you may be ready to run out to the garden center for planting. But if you're able to, rest your beds for a season. I got this tip from the Budget Lawns channel. He recommends for new beds to hand pull any weeds that come up and waiting to plant for a season, which will help create the right environment for new plants to thrive. He knows a lot more about lawn and landscape care than I do. I got most of my material for this project at Home Depot. They sell the name brand stuff. But towards the end, I ran out of a section of edging, and so I checked out Lowe's to see what they had. They were selling this generic four inch hard plastic edging, and I thought, what's the big difference? Well, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I had all kinds of problems with it. It creased up on me when I was trying to unroll it, and some of those creases were impossible to get out, so they still show in the finished product. So get the good stuff, the first time. This is a simple job, but that doesn't mean it's easy. Putting in edging, tearing up sod, breaking up dirt is tough work, all done in the heat. Make sure you stay hydrated and have some ibuprofen on hand for later. Check out the video on my new hot tub. That's how I like to rest after a tough day of work. Thanks for watching. I hope these tips help make your next DIY edging project a huge success. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to Dadville, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.